Hello everyone. In this module, I shall talk about quantitative research. My focus shall be on discussing the nature of quantitative research and some of its aspects within the limited time frame that has been given to me. But before I do that, I shall like to dwell on two questions relating to scientific inquiry. The first is, what constitutes scientific research? And the second question is, is there a fundamental difference in the scientific research undertaken by the physical sciences, the social sciences and the life sciences? The questions or the questions that I have posed just now, they look very simple. But on a little reflection, it is easy to realize that these are daunting questions, difficult questions. And philosophers, historians and scientists have debated over these for several centuries. Of course, some early modern philosophers stated that if a branch of knowledge has to gain acceptance epistemologically, then it must follow methods of physics. These philosophers were known as logical positivists. These philosophers attempted to achieve unity across sciences by reducing them all to physics. They said or they asserted that everything must be studied like we study physics. But this prescription was obviously not very acceptable. It actually ran into insuperable technical difficulties. Of course, this was not acceptable. Of course, this was completely rejected. Instead, an attempt was made to find commonality of scientific approach applicable to all branches of scientific inquiry. Here, I shall like to draw on the exposition made by Merton. Merton saw great commonality among the sciences, be they life sciences or social sciences or physical sciences. He described science as having four major goals, four major aims. And first is, first goal is universalism. Universalism actually in the context of sciences, of scientific inquiry is the quest for general laws. That is all sciences, all types of sciences attempt to make generalizations about the phenomenon being studied by them. Second commonality among sciences is the organization. This is actually the quest to organize a set of related facts or observations. Organize a set of related facts or observations in such a way that logical inferences can be drawn and theories can be proved and disproved or new theories can be arrived at from such organization of data or observations. Now, third aspect is skepticism. By skepticism, I mean that all sciences have a norm of questioning and looking for counter explanations. Whatever is put forth by the scientist as a conclusion or generalization or theory, it must be questioned so that evolution of knowledge keeps taking place, new insights keep coming in and our understanding of different phenomena whether in physical sciences, life sciences or social sciences keeps growing. And finally, lastly, the fourth commonality among sciences is what is known as or what Merton calls communalism. Communalism actually is a sense, is a quest to develop a community that shares a set of norms or principles for doing science for pursuing science. This quest of sciences is concerned with creating a peer group of scientists who support a well, who support as well as question each other for greater good of the society as a whole. In short, we can reasonably assert that there are both commonalities and differences across the sciences. But at a general level, the sciences share a great deal in common and each scientific enterprise 
whether in physical sciences or social sciences, is guided by a set of what might be called epistemological or fundamental principles. Let us take a look at these epistemological or fundamental principles that make scientific inquiry by different, different disciplines common. These principles include, number one, seeking conceptual theoretical understanding of the phenomenon under study. Seeking conceptual theoretical understanding means understanding and explaining what and how of the phenomenon. That is, what the phenomenon consists of and how it works. For example, in physics, if we talk about the concept of say a particle, that means we are seeking explanation about its constituents or its structure, covering say electron, proton, neutron, nucleus and relationship between them. In social sciences, if I have to take example from social sciences, let us take the case of say politeness. To explain the concept of politeness, we shall have to look at what constitutes politeness. Is it genuine respect? Is it coming out of genuine respect? Or it is just a smile, a smile on the face, though there is hatred in the mind. And we must also understand what are the factors that influence politeness, its antecedents and consequences, both. Second principle is posing empirically testable and refutable hypothesis. Third principle is designing studies that test and can rule out competing counter hypothesis. Fourthly, using observational methods linked to theory that enable other scientists to verify their accuracy. And final principle is recognizing the importance of both independent replication and generalization. That is to say, a study should be testable, verifiable and replicable. What unites scientific inquiry is the primacy of empirical testing. At the core of scientific inquiry is empirical testing, dear friends. Empirical testing of propositions made by the investigator, whether these are in the form of conjectures or formal hypothesis, empirical testing must take place. And this needs to be done using well codified observational methods and rigorous research designs. Whatever design or research you may adopt, it must be rigorous in terms of being systematic, logical and consistent. And it should be aligned with what the research wishes to accomplish. Finally, the scientific inquiry needs to subject its findings to peer review. If I have to summarize what I have said so far, it can be safely asserted that in all research, we strive to collect empirical data systematically and to examine data patterns so that we can better understand and explain social life. This can be accomplished by employing two different approaches, quantitative and qualitative. In my earlier lecture in this induction program, I explained qualitative research approach. Quantitative approach in my, in my opinion can be better understood, its focus can be better understood if we dwell a little on how they differ in respect of what I stated just now, collection of empirical data and examination of data patterns. A first difference between quantitative and qualitative approaches originates in the nature of data itself. Qualitative research, qualitative research strategies use soft data like words, sentences, photos, symbols and so on. Whereas, quantitative approach focuses on data collection techniques which provide hard data, hard data in the form of numbers. This difference in the nature of data 
may make the tools for quantitative study inappropriate or irrelevant for the qualitative study and vice versa. Another difference between qualitative and quantitative research originates in the principles about research process and assumptions about social life. Qualitative and quantitative research principles give rise to different languages of research with different emphasis in a, in a, quantitative, in a quantitative study, we rely more on positivist principles and use a language of variables and hypothesis. Our emphasis here is on precise measuring of the variables and testing the hypothesis. In a qualitative study, we rely more on principles from interpretive or critical social science approach. We speak a language of cases and contexts and of cultural meaning in case of qualitative research. Our emphasis there is on examination of specific cases that arise in the natural flow of social life. The focus of quantitative research on the other hand is on measurement and building the understanding of the phenomena or the concepts through the path of measurement based on observation. A third difference between qualitative and quantitative research lies in what we try to accomplish in a study. The heart of good work, whether it is quantitative or qualitative is a puzzle and an idea. In all studies, we try to solve a puzzle or answer a question. But depending on the approach, we do this in different ways. In quantitative study, we usually try to verify or falsify a relationship or a hypothesis we already have in mind. We focus on an outcome or effect found across numerous cases. The test of a hypothesis may be more than a simple true or false answer. Yes, in quantitative approach, we do focus on accepting or rejecting the hypothesis, but we never lose sight of the fact that a hypothesis may be true for some cases or under certain conditions, but not others. That is, there may be circumstances where our hypothesis may or may not be true. However, we often, uh, we, we often generate new hypothesis in case of qualitative research and describe details of the causal mechanism or process for a narrow set of cases. A fourth difference between quantitative and qualitative studies is that each has a distinct path of conducting research. The path is a metaphor for a sequence of things to do what you finish first and what comes next. You can follow a straight, well-known well -known and marked path that has clear, clear signposts and on this path, many have others already walked. Now, this is the approach that is followed by quantitative approach. Alternatively, you may have another path. You may follow a path that meanders into unknown, unknown territories where few others have gone. The path has few signs. So, you move forward, we are off the side and sometimes backtrack a little before you go forward. Now, this is the approach that you follow in the qualitative approach. In quantitative approach, path is straight and linear, whereas in case of qualitative approach, the path is non-linear. Well, highlighting these differences between quantitative and qualitative approaches would have given you some understanding regarding the nature of quantitative research. To understand the nature of quantitative research, let us take a look at the steps and nature of scientific inquiry once again. The first step 
in scientific inquiry for purpose of data collection is observation. Now, I have used the word here observation as the first step. Now, this word observation relates to observation of objects and events, but this word observation can suggest a casual passive activity. Scientists often use the term measurement in place of this. Measurement is a superior substitute of observation because word measurement implies careful deliberate observations of the real world for the purpose of describing objects and events and their attributes. And as I said earlier that that quantitative approach attempts to observe through observation. And once again I would like to remind that I also stated that in all research we strive to collect empirical data systematically and to examine data patterns. In quantitative approach the central point regarding data collection is measurement. To understand the nature of quantitative research focus we must first understand the need for measurement. I shall undertake the need for measurement and further exposition of this in the next module.